I really like the kind of make, do and mend attitude they had at the time. These guys were pioneers in doing what they do. Some of it may seem clunky and strange now, but at the time this was completely cutting edge and it's absolutely perfectly serviceable now. Welcome back to AATV. I'm your host Tom Anvil Hibbard and today we're going to talk all about my retro Delta Car 15. So we've previously gone over my Tokyo Marui Mark 18 Mod 1. And to continue the series, I'm going to talk more about some of the airsoft rifles that I actually use, this being one of them. So as many of you all know, I've long been a fan of the film Black Hawk Down, which was hugely influential when I started playing airsoft back in the very early 2000s. It had just come out. Back then, I didn't have the knowledge I needed to build an accurate replica. And in a previous video, I went through the setup of three of my retro carbines. Today we're going to talk about this one, my Colt model M723 that I've just built up. Now these were used by Delta Force, the US Special Forces Tier 1 unit, back in the late 80s and the early 90s before they switched over to the M4. Most notably used in Panama and in Operation Gothic Serpent, which is Black Hawk Down. A really quick bit of background into the M723. If you want to know more, check out the Forgotten Weapons video with Larry Vickers and he goes over it in quite some extensive detail. Effectively, they're an M16A2 carbine with a 14 and a half inch barrel with one in seven twist. The only real difference between the M16A1 carbines, the 653, and the M723 is the barrel rate. They needed a faster twist rate to deal with the new heavier cartridges that were starting to be used. You find M723s set up in a variety of ways from the factory with A1 uppers, A1 E1 uppers with the brass deflector, A1 lowers and A2 lowers. Most of them were all commercial off the shelf carbines so they didn't have US property marks on them. This one I've built as a pretty representative middle of the road one as used in Gothic Serpent, so 1993 by Delta Force. The movie guns were cut down from Guatemalan M16A2s, so they had an A2 carry handle. The ones actually carried by Delta at the time had the A1 carry handle, some with the brass deflector, some not, as they much preferred the A1 sights. So let's go over this replica. Internally, it's basically a GMP733 that I've changed the front end on. So the gearbox is largely stock, apart from a Peron MOSFET. However, if I'm going to game with it, I'll actually use the lower of my 653, which has a much better gearbox. So this has 16 to 1 gears, high torque motor, Titan, short stroked. So the gearbox is pretty good in this, really snappy and I really like it. This also has an upgraded barrel, so it has a Sarnex Sci-Hop and a prototype 6.05mm barrel. Absolutely excellent. This is the gun we use for accuracy and range testing all the time. You see it with the more modern front end on and the Vortex scope. So this is my Ergi upper that drops again onto that lower. And you'll be pretty familiar with this if you're a friend of the channel. So this is a 70, 75 meter gun with a 0.32 gram BB on about 1.1, 1.2 joules. So it's extremely good and extremely long ranged. So as I say, I'll probably normally use this lower on the 723 if I was actually going to play with it. One of the nice things about having a lot of the same make of gun, in this case GMP, is you can mix and match and move things around a bit, just like we've done. So this is a bit of an odd one, although it's set up to look like the real guns. I've got lots of 3D printed parts on that I made, mainly because a lot of the real parts now are really hard to find and or expensive. Plus I've got a 3D printer, and some CAD software, and I really fancied having a go at making some stuff myself. So let's go tip to butt as usual. So a lot of you will have seen my 3D printed collars for the FMA suppressor before. If you haven't, let's just go over it quickly. So a lot of these at the time were running the Ops third model suppressor. This is a sleeved over barrel suppressor. So it actually screws on about midway where the barrel ends and there's more volume behind the muzzle end. These are very hard to find in Airsoft now. In fact, I don't think anyone's actually making them. So I made an adapter. So there's a 3D printed collar. 
The rear end of the FMA suppressor is taken off. The muzzle goes into a plug and the rear is replaced. So that means you get pretty good facsimile of the op suppressor. So let's just take that off for now. So starting at the front, A2 birdcage with the lower parts blanked off. This was a change with the M16A2 to stop dust and dirt and debris being kicked up. So it still acts as a flash hider, but it's a bit more of a compensator. So some 723s had a pencil barrel and some had this grenade launch profile barrel, which is now common, more commonly known as an M4 barrel. This one in particular has a GMP M4 front end on. So the profile isn't quite correct, but it's as close as you're gonna get without getting a custom barrel. Nicely been trademarked with the relevant markings. I'll leave the collar on for now, because that's quite cool. A key point of these carbines is the skinny Car 15 grips. These are from Brownells. Depending on whether they've got them in stock, can be really easy to get, or you may have to wait a while. These drop straight onto the GMP and also the CMA as well. So these days, a fighting light or a white light is really common and really easy to mount on any sort of gun with a railed forend. At that point, it didn't exist. So the Delta Armourers came up with a variety of solutions, and you may have seen Larry Vickers Car 15 with a big dive light underneath. This is a few years on and they started using the more dedicated Surefire 660 weapon lights. Now this isn't a Surefire 660. Again, difficult to get hold of and quite expensive. And they're actually not very good. Uh, the Lumens back in those days, we would consider pitiful these days. So for all those reasons, I fancy doing something a bit different as well as practicing some 3D printing skills. So this is a modern clone Surefire M600 by either Evolution or someone else, to which I cut the mount off with a Dremel, turned it back into a ring, and that's inside a 3D printed shroud. And this has taken a couple of iterations, and this is by no means the last one. I'm gonna carry on working on this. Now I've got the form factor correct, I'm gonna start adding more of the details from the Surefire 660, and maybe even print a few of those up in nylon if anyone's interested. That's wired into a tape switch from the Clone Surefire, which comes out the back. If anyone wondered why they put a little bit of tape around there, I suspect it's to hold the tape switch down. And the tape switch runs onto the top of the handguard for activation. Works really well. It may get a bit hot, but I really like the form factor. The 660 is mounted via a wheel ring. Very nicely sent to me by a good friend. Thank you very much, I highly appreciate it. You can also use the vertical split rings like holding the aim point on, and both were seen in use. These are more commonly seen on a barrel mount, but I really like the way it looks. Now, at, again, at the time, the pick rail didn't exist. They were using weaver rail. Weaver rail comes in a variety of different sizes before it was standardized into pick rail and NATO rail, as we now do. So the Delta Armourers were mounting the rail onto the handguards directly. Now, so this is a bit, again, I3D printed up. It just has one slot and it mounts through the two holes on the bottom of the handguard, same as these two. And I've put a bit of a taper on it to keep it flat. Taper on the little rail section keeps the light parallel to the barrel. Again, this is another prototype I made. Again, you just can't get these things. So, and I like a tidy, nice solution. So I made a tidy, nice bit of rail. The light switch is literally just taped on to keep it down and I've also got a little zip tie around just to keep the front end in place. I really like the kind of make do and mend attitude they had at the time. These guys were pioneers in doing what they do. Some of it may seem clunky and strange now but at the time this was completely cutting edge and it's absolutely perfectly serviceable now. As I said the handguards are the skinny car 15 ones from Brownells. The Brownells ones are really nice you may need to take the heat shields out if you're trying to run a battery in the front end, but they're much sturdier and much nicer than things like the GMP ones. The receiver, and most of it comes from a stock GMP M733, which had the correct A1 carry handle and the brass deflector. This receiver is commonly called a C7 because the Canadians started using it. You could also call it an M16A1E1 as it was developed before they went straight to the M16A2 with a more complex sight block. The lower is an M16A2 with all the reinforcing and it currently has no trades. Something I really want to get sorted out. The lower I do use all the time, the 653 does have M16A1 trades on it. So the sights are another one. What's quite funny these days is everyone's starting to use risers again. So we were direct mounting our optics to the flat top of a railed receiver. And now everyone, including myself, has started using risers 
to get the optic up. Well, guess what? They were doing it back in those days. So it does a couple of things. It's useful for passive night vision aiming. It allows for a nice heads up position. When you're getting old like me, it really helps my neck out. And even an airsoft, if you're wearing face pro, it makes it much easier to get a good cheat weld. I really like it. Looks like Delta did it right back in 93. The carry handle rail, I can't remember where I got it from. I got it absolutely donkeys years ago. Uh, I don't even remember who manufactured it. It's probably not even very correct, but it will do for now. What you'll be working out about this replica is what I'm looking for is a silhouette from 10 feet away. Does it look good enough from 10 feet away? Is it gonna be immersion breaking? And I think it's absolutely fine. So the optic, slightly earlier than Blackhawk Down, they're using 8.2000s. During that period, they'd mainly moved to 8.5000s. The 3000 wasn't liked that much, I believe. I could be wrong. Again, those optics are now no longer being manufactured. Quite rare and quite expensive. I don't really want to take something that historical and valuable onto an airsoft field and potentially get it shot out. I guess you could put a lens protector over the front. So this is a GMP endpoint M2 clone, and it has a 3D printed extension on the back here to make it look more like one of those longer bodied retro endpoints. It's somewhere in between a 2000 and a 5000. The rings are pretty good. They're not the exact ones, but they are the vertical split rings. So instead of the split being horizontal like we're used to, the whole ring is split vertically. And that's pretty authentic. They're pretty close to the real ones. And I've also turned the aim point sideways a bit to make it look a bit more authentic. Again, from distance, it's absolutely fine. The cap or the extension on the back shares the rear clamp. Going back, the castle nut really should be the same nut as I have on the 653, which is the old lock nut without the little castellations. Again, if I'm using the 653 lower, it doesn't really matter. And one of these old Type 2 Car 15 plastic stocks. Now this has too many positions. The real ones at this time had two, all the way in, all the way out. The Delta Armourers would cut another position or mill out another position for the trooper themselves. This one is one I have lying around, but doesn't really bother me too much. Again, it's absolutely fine from 10 feet away. The magazines I use are the GMP Stanag, AR mags, uh, mid caps, absolutely fine. I have quite a few of these. And they've got an improvised mag pole on the bottom, which is a bit of power cord with a zip tie in the middle, knotted at both ends and just sandwiched between some duct tape. So it makes it handy to get out of the pockets. The pouches used at the time aren't as fast as the ones we use now. And also it gives me something to grip with the knots when I'm doing mag changes. And a whole part of making a replica of this time is using the green tape. So you're probably gonna ask me where I got the green tape from. That's also another common question. This is 3M olive tape, literally bought from the middle at Lidl when they had an offer on and I bought a few rolls. So keep your eyes out if you go to a Lidl or an Aldi and you may well see this green tape. Otherwise it can be quite hard to get. Batteries wise, I run 1100 milliamp, 7.4 volt LiPos, about 20, 25C inside the stock tube. Not a lot of capacity. However, I don't really do a lot of shooting with these. I don't need a lot and that's fine for a whole day. If not a weekend, really, if I'm at a film sim event, I just don't do a lot of shooting. I really like this replica. It's something I've always wanted, I think. Even, and it's a custom build, even though I really just did a front end swap between two existing carbines I had. I can't really show you that because unfortunately YouTube will completely demonetize the video if I show taking the front ends off one gun and putting them on another. So BBs, uh, this will easily shoot with the 653 lower, easily shoot three twos and three sixes out to 70, 75 meters. It's effective out to about 60. It's pretty nasty really. Um, you don't need many shots, many fire it on semi. Absolutely fine. One or two shots, you can normally hit your target at 50, 60 meters without any trouble. So no need to overkill. And seeing as Delta didn't really use full auto at the time, that seems really appropriate. If you want to know more about the 723, highly recommend Forgotten Weapons video with Larry Vickers. Larry Vickers also shoots his own personal copy on his YouTube channel, which is awesome and really good to see. And I think it's one of his favorite guns as well. He's one of his favorite ARs. And it is probably my favorite gun of all time. Thanks for watching this episode of AATV. I've been your host, Tom Anvil Hibbard. If you'd like to help support this channel, we run a Patreon scheme. You can also sign up to Audible and we get a kickback from that. And you can buy one of our awesome t-shirts from Teespring. All the links are down in the description. Please like, share, subscribe, ding that bell to receive notifications whenever we go live. The YouTube algorithm really does not like firearms related content. So we really are struggling to increase our reach at the moment. Most importantly, 
stay safe, and we'll see you soon.